this is a theory based question. The problem is like this i 1 is equal to integral of 0 to pi x sin f of sin x dx 0 to pi x sin f of sin x dx i 2 is equal to pi by 2 times 0 to pi f sin x dx i 3 is equal to pi times 0 to pi by 2 f of sin x dx. The true statement is there are four statements i 1 is equal to i 2 not equal to i 3 i 1 not equal to i 2 is equal to i 3 option c i 1 not equal to i 2 not equal to i 3 and option d is i 1 is equal to i 2 is equal to i 3. Look at this dear students we have integral of 0 to pi x times f of sin x dx. So, using the property integral of 0 to a f of x dx change x to pi minus x integral of 0 to a f of x dx is nothing but equal to integral of 0 to a f of a minus x dx. So, you call this as i the same i is equal to once again integral of 0 to pi pi minus x into f of sin of pi minus x. What is sin of pi minus x? Sin of pi minus x is sin x once again because sin of pi minus x is in second quadrant. So, that is f of sin x dx. Is that correct? That is also i. i plus i 2i i plus i 2i is equal to integral of 0 to pi x plus pi minus x x x cancels leaving pi outside 0 to pi pi will get outside f of sin x. I repeat this once again this is a proof that you should have studied in your school also x plus pi minus x x x cancels. So, 2i is equal to pi times 0 to pi f of sin x dx then what is i? i is pi by 2 times integral of 0 to pi f of sin x. Is that correct? That means to say i 1 is same as i 2. This implies i is equal to pi by 2 times integral of 0 to pi f of sin x dx. So, i is equal to pi by 2 0 to pi f of sin x dx pi by 2 times 0 to pi f of sin x dx is nothing but equal to i 2 and of course, we got that as i 1 this itself is i 1. So, i 2 is equal to i 1 i 2 is equal to i 1 means either a must be correct or d must be correct one of these two. So, clearly option c option b are ruled out. Now, we have to talk about i 3 dear students you must know this integral of 0 to 2a f of x dx is nothing but equal to 2 times integral of 0 to a f of x dx under the condition f of 2a minus x is f of x. Integral of 0 to 2a f of x dx is equal to 2 times integral of 0 to a f of x dx provided f of 2a minus x is f of x. So, using that relation what we can talk here is look at this dear students right i 2 is equal to you write this pi as 2 times pi by 2. f of sin of 2 times pi by 2 minus x is same as f of sin of pi minus x. Sin of pi minus x is sin x. Therefore, this will be retained as sin f of sin x dx. That means to say integral of 0 to 2 times pi by 2 f of sin x will be once again integral of 0 to pi 2 times pi by 2 f of sin x. If I change x to 2 times pi by 2 minus x, 2 times pi by 2 and pi are 1 and the same. That means to say we can write it as 2 times integral of 0 to pi by 2 f of sin x dx and of course into pi by 2 is here, I am writing as it is. So, these two cancels with this leaving pi times integral of 0 to pi by 2 f of sin x dx that is i 3 pi times integral of 0 to pi by 2 f of sin x dx therefore, option d is correct option a is ruled out. See how simple it is. I have taken this problem with an intention the reason is several times we will be using one among these three properties or one of these three 
equivalents right make a note of this it's a very very important problem particularly for your cet exam right so let us discuss next problem now integral 0 to 10 pi tan inverse of x greatest integer function of tan inverse of x dx is option e is 10 pi minus 1 option b is 10 pi minus tan 1 option c is 10 pi plus tan 1 and option d is 10 pi minus pi by 4 look at this dear students let me draw the graph of tan inverse of x first right let me draw the graph of tan inverse of x how will be the graph of tan inverse of x the tan inverse of x graph is clearly like this assume this is the line pi by 2 and this is assume this is minus pi by 2 okay the graph of tan inverse of x is clearly like this y is equal to pi by 2 and y is equal to minus pi by 2 are the asymptotes to the curve what do you mean by the word asymptotes to the curve a line which meets the curve at infinity is called as an asymptote for y is equal to tan inverse of x if you call this as tan inverse of x for tan inverse of x there are two asymptotes one is x y is equal to pi by 2 I mean the one is y is equal to minus pi by 2 this is y is equal to minus pi by 2 and this is y is equal to plus pi by 2 these are the two asymptotes and when tan inverse of x is less than 1 is a question definitely it ranges between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 do you agree with me minus pi by 2 means minus 3.14 by 2 that is minus 1.57 to plus 1.57 that means to say in between you will get plus 1 and minus 1 assume that this is 1 y is equal to 1 and this is minus 1 particularly for this problem this part is not required but only for your explanation purpose I am writing this however when this becomes 1 particularly at this point do you agree with me this point is tan 1 what is the reason for this this point is clearly tan 1 what is the reason as this is tan 1 comma 1 why it is tan 1 comma 1 if you put y is equal to x is equal to tan 1 we will get tan inverse of tan 1 that is equal to 1 this you must know dear students and where does 10 pi comes somewhere here 10 pi comes assumed right the question is 0 to 10 pi integral part of tan x tan inverse of x look at this do you agree with me if x belongs to 0 to tan 1 if x belongs to 0 to tan 1 including 0 excluding tan 1 tan inverse of x tan inverse of x belongs to tan inverse of 0 to tan inverse of tan 1 that is 1 that is it belongs to tan inverse of 0 0 tan inverse of tan 1 is 1 do you agree with me now what is integral part of a number which lies between 0 and 1 look at this therefore therefore integral part of tan 1 integral part of tan inverse of x for the same range is equal to integral part of a number which lies between 0 and 1 that is equal to 0 do you agree with me so integral part of tan inverse of x x lies between 0 to tan 1 is clearly 0 coming to the next stage suppose if x belongs to if x belongs to tan 1 to infinity whether it is tan 1 to tan 2 or infinity starting from tan 1 up to infinity but in this problem they have given tan pi tan 1 to tan pi 10 pi sorry tan 1 to 10 pi including tan 1 excluding 10 pi what happens is tan inverse of x tan inverse of x tan inverse of x belongs to 
tan inverse of tan 1, 1, right? Tan inverse of tan of 10 pi. Any value, whether it is 10 pi or 20 pi or 100 pi, is a value less than 1. Do you agree with me? Tan inverse of any number greater than tan 1 is definitely less than 2 because this itself is 1.57. So, that should be less than 2. So, I can straight away say it lies between 1 and 2. Is that correct? Now, integral part of tan inverse of x, this implies, this implies integral part of tan inverse of x, integral part of tan inverse of x is clearly equal to 1. With this basic, we can definitely start discussing this problem. What is the question here, given here? Integral 0 to pi, 0 to 10 pi, ta, integral part of tan inverse of x, integral part of tan inverse of x dx is equal to integral 0 to 1, 0 to 1, it is 0 to tan 1, integral of 0 to tan 1, between 0 and tan 1, 0 and tan 1, integral part of tan inverse of x is 0, 0 dx plus tan 1 to tan 1 to 10 pi, tan 1 to 10 pi. So, what is integral part of tan inverse of x? That is 1 dx. So, that means to say, upper limit is 10 pi, lower limit is tan 1. So, this is 10 pi minus tan 1. I hope you are understanding this because this is integral part of, so integration of 1 with respect to x, integration of 1 is x, upper limit is 10 pi, lower limit is tan 1, it is tan pi minus tan 1, 10 pi minus tan 1. So, option B is correct. I repeat, it is tan 1 to 10 pi 1 dx, integral of 1 is, integration of 1 is x upper limit is 10 pi, lower limit is tan 1, 10 pi minus tan 1. Therefore, that clearly says option B is correct. Understood this dear students? This is traditional method. What is the shortcut for this? The shortcut is very, very simple dear students. When it lies between 0 to 10 pi, it is like this. x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 10 pi. It represents an area. That area should be less than area formed by these two. So, use this concept and try to simplify that. 10 pi minus 0 into width or into height that you have to consider. If you are very much familiar with the area, you can straight away do using area concept. Otherwise, you can use typical integration method and solve this. Got it? Now, let us go to the next problem. Now, let us discuss next problem. Integral of 3 to 7 cos of x square dx divided by cos x square plus cos of 10 minus x whole square is option A 2, option B 1, option C 1 by 2 and option D is 0. Dear students, you must be familiar about one particular concept in integration that is like this. Integral A to B f of x dx must be equal to integral a to b f of a plus b minus x dx. This is one of the basic property of integration. And now, one more rule is there. That rule is integral of 0 to a f of x dx is integral of 0 to a f of a minus x dx. That is the derived part of this. But however, if you consider this, we have 3 to 7 cos x square dx. Call this as i. So, the same i is equal to, the same i is equal to integral 3 to 7. Cos x square, I will write it as cos of 3 plus 7 10 minus x whole square. Cos of 3 plus 7 10 minus x whole square. Do you agree with me? Divided by, divided by cos of, you can write x as cos of 10 minus x whole square plus you write x as once again 10 minus x, 10 minus 10 minus x will become only x, is that correct? Plus cos of x square, do you agree with me? This with respect to x. You call this as 1, call this as 2, i plus i will give what? i plus i is 2i, therefore 2i is equal to you must be familiar with this kind of problem. 
cos x square plus cos of 10 minus x square divided by cos x square plus cos of 10 minus x square. This plus this is in the numerator, this is in the denominator, numerator is same as denominator, we will get 1 with respect to x. That is equal to 1 integration of 1 is x, upper limit is 7, lower limit is 3, it is 7 minus 3 that is equal to 4. 2i is equal to 4 that clearly says i is equal to 2. I hope dear students you have followed this. It is a very simple problem but taken from your CET paper, not exactly Karnataka CET, one of the entrance exams. So it is a very simple problem, I hope you have followed this. Now let us go to the next problem.